Well, hello. We're here with Matt Meyer from Hiding Spot, who's currently working on Beacon Pines, which is which just finished its Kickstarter. Hello, Matt. How's go how's it going? Hi. It's going all right. A little stressful with the Kickstarter ending, but it's a bit of a relief and a bit of extra stress now that it's over. Yeah, especially with uh, me asking for an interview and then messing up the audio file. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. what exactly? It's been that kind of week for me, so I totally understand. <laughs> so what exactly do you do at Hiding Spot? What is your job there, and what are things that you're working on? Yes, yeah, so I'm sort of the lead at Hiding Spot. I do uh, program programming, design, writing, music, animation, um, and then for Beacon Pines, I'm working with two other people, Ilsa, who does all the art as well as you know, helping with all the design and story and characters, and then Brent, who um, also does the writing on the game. Um, so yeah, it's the three of us. Have you worked on any other previous titles or maybe other games previously? Yeah, this is um, sort of a third major game release. And um previous one was a iOS and Android game, a sort of an action adventure not action adventure, more more just an action arcade type game called Flipping Legend, um, and then before that was a game called Ephemerid, which was more artsy musical adventure type game. It was kind of a whole album of music with a game written around it, sort of designing in reverse. Um, a lot of games, the music comes second, so that game I wanted to, as a musician myself, I wanted to just put music at the forefront. So. Built the whole game around an album of music. It's it quite interesting. interesting. Yeah. It sounds very interesting. I heard of it, similar experiences before and everything, but I haven't heard of those titles in particular yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it um the the ephemerid the first one did well critically, but did not do well financially. I think it was a little too niche. Not um not the kind of game. It's easy to see and understand what it is, so hard to sell that kind of game. Yeah, no, I mean, Beacon Pines is a lot more straightforward, I guess, in a way, then. Um, yeah, at least visually, it's much more clear, like, what's what the game is, um, even though it is a little bit different than some might expect when they actually play it. So what exactly is Beacon Pines about? How would you uh, summarize it? It's about a lot of things. I guess the, the story itself is one layer of that. The story is about... Um, some kids who are growing up sort of around um, around the ages of 10 to like 15. Um, this group of kids who are in a small town and their town is going through changes just like they are. And um, it's a bit of a sci-fi twist that is happening with the town. And a, a lot of the game is about figuring out what's going on in the town. The demo sort of starts off by exposing the player to some of the mysterious things involved with the town, which are seem to be coming from this old fertilizer warehouse. Um, so a lot of the demo is involved with figuring out or poking around there and trying to figure out some of what's happening. Um, and then the other element of what it's about is sort of the, me the mechanic of it. It's a lot of it is about finding these words throughout the world as you explore uh, we call them charms. It's basically just it looks like a sort of charm that you would collect, but it has a word on it. And so then that word is um, something that you can use to change the story. So I don't want to stomp on any potential other questions you have about that by just <laughs> continuing to explain it. So I'll leave. If you have any mechanical questions, I'll leave that for later. But... Yeah, I felt as if the whole choose-your-own-adventure style of a game was very interesting and intriguing, and in a way it kind of reminded me of some other games like Omen Side and Stories, Path of Destinies. Are there any inspirations taken from those or other games, maybe? Or uh, uh, where did the idea I've never, come from? I've never heard of those, but I'm more than happy <laughs> to hear about games that are doing something in the same vein, because, yeah, it was... A part part of it is we um, Ilsa of the team is the only one who's really played a lot of games in this genre or in you know this yeah I guess genre is the word for it sort of the just text text heavy games um, myself and Brent uh, typically play a little more action heavy games I mentioned my previous one was sort of an action game 
but when we started developing this game, it sort of just became more and more obvious that the characters were the most interesting part. And um, we just developed it more and more into this story heavy game with no combat where it's mostly just about finding words and, and putting them in to change the outcome of the story. Um, but yeah, in terms of other influences, um, I definitely like a lot of games that have um, interesting or different mechanics to them. So like something like Journey was from the start of my game development career, a big influence. Um, it's the way that it sort of, I don't know if invert is the right word for, for it, but it sort of takes a very different look at what a game can be. Um, so that's one of the, like I said, one of the inspirations from the start for me, which is why I did a very sort of artsy musical game as my first game. Um, it was very much in the spirit of Journey. Um, but that game company, they make a lot of stuff that um, gives influence to what we do still. Um, what else? Uh... Maybe Gravity Falls, for instance, a little bit in there. And like I could see that playing the demo, uh, and I really enjoyed uh, how the story branched out, similar to how those other games that I've named before. And it kind of felt like a uh, Twilight Zone meets Gravity Falls meets uh, other like cute cartoons ish kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm honestly not familiar with those other ones. Ilsa would probably <laughs> be familiar with those. Um, so maybe she's taking some influence from those. Uh, in terms of how that actually, how we do the the story and the mechanics, it really was sort of from the ground up. Um, the game started as. And again, this sort of goes in line with what I was just saying. It started as a combat-based uh, sort of RPG game. Um, Ooh. I read a whole post of it about it on Reddit once, but um, but uh, it's not something I've told too many people about. It um, started off as the idea was sort of a rhythm-based RPG battle <laughs> type game. Um, yes, it's it's very, very different from what it started out as. Um, but I've actually got, you know, we've got video of it from back then. It was actually pretty polished at one point. Um, but the mechanic just never clicked. Like, it sounds cool, you know, like a rhythm-based. And again, I'm coming from a very musical background, so I, <laughs> I wanted to make a very musical game. But then again, like I said, it just turned more and more into this thing where the characters were making more sense than the mechanics of this rhythm game were. So we just started doing, looking more and more at the characters and the exploration part of it. And... Yeah, one day I just was trying to think of interesting things to do with that. And the idea was sort of like what if you incorporated the idea of like a Mad Libs type mechanic into it, where instead of choosing lines of dialogue, you're filling in a word. Um, so then that started this whole like next like year and a half journey of figuring out what that means and how that worked um, to the point where we're at now, where it's sort of a, yeah, finding these charms and you can go back sort of time travel it's not exactly time traveling but you can go back to other points in the story and immediately change the branching in these crazy ways um, by the cards you find before or after like you can find cards and go back to a whole different part that you played before and see a, a new result um, so anyways that's a long-winded explanation of <laughs> non-related question uh, i would love to see the videos of that driven based beacon pines game yeah um, yeah i can probably even point you to that reddit post real quick but I don't amazing i'm, I'm looking the, forward to it yeah, um, i don't want to keep the audio from going so we can move on i'll think of that later uh looking forward to it um yeah, I mean, uh, the stories and the turning points and the charms that he used in those turning points were something that I really liked about the game. When I played the demo, it just felt like it, it's branching into so many paths now. Suddenly, mm -hmm. I used this one thing and suddenly uh, the story got a lot more grim. Uh, mm -hmm. Next time, I used this other charm and suddenly I'll have to face a situation completely differently from how I did it before. It was very interesting. I really liked that about the game. How much do you think the whole game will um, branch out? Will it be somewhat complicated? Will it be tricky maybe even? Sort of like a puzzle where you yeah. have to find out where you got... Yeah, that'll be a part of it, yeah. Um, we like the idea of sort of the whole meta structure being a bit puzzly itself. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing we don't want to do is make players 
feel like they have to see every part of the game. We do make it so that you can easily see every part of the game. So it's sort of a not only a choose your own adventure, but choose your own style of playing the game. Again, just relating it to our team, I'm the kind of person who sort of likes to go down one path entirely and maybe I'll see other paths. Um, Ilsa is the kind of person who's a completionist chill. <laughs> and this is the kind of person I see a lot from watching people play the the demo now on Twitch and stuff is people really like going immediately back and trying different charms to see the different results, which is cool because that's a part of why we made it that way where you can easily go back and change things. Um, but yeah, it'll definitely branch out quite a bit as we continue to develop the game. And that'll be tricky not only for the player, but also for us um, as developers uh, to make that all work in a cohesive way. Um, but the well idea done. is a fair amount of the branches might end sooner. And for the most part, any given branch won't necessarily give you all the information about the story, but it will hopefully, like, they're, the plan now is to have a couple of major endings, and they would mostly feel like a resolution to the story, but you can easily go back and see a different ending that would also sort of resolve the story in the same world, but maybe you would know more or less information depending on which branch you take. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense just describing it, but... It absolutely does. I mean, uh, the other games that I mentioned before, I, I just very much love those games. Basically, you choose your... Um, you have In one of them, you're in a book, and you basically choose different paths and um, can side with different characters, basically, to experience the story in a way that you don't get... Like, if you just follow one of them you may be more biased suddenly because you only get the side for uh, the, to experience the story from one side of things uh -huh. and it's something that i really liked about beacon pines as well i mean in essence those games aren't that similar but the whole principle and how the story branches out was very interesting and kind of similar and that's something i really liked in the demo mm -hmm. i just saw basically that um you basically had these areas where you would um, have to uh, use your charms in a smart way to suddenly progress a little bit. I'd imagine that the game would end very soon if you were put onto uh, detention or something like that and locked into your room <laughs> all of a right. sudden. And you just have to figure out a different one because you can't say shit to your granny. Right. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's, it's hopefully going to be um, a combination of both giving players interesting options but also making like i said that meta layer feel like a bit of a puzzle in, in and of itself um yeah so where's development at right now i mean you just finished your kickstart and the stretch goals and everything and now you have a lot of features to go on and you mentioned earlier that the discord now is getting a lot of uh, members as well so you need to sort that on out um yeah how finished are you feeling about the game um, it's, it's funny because we were actually just this week finally getting some time to get back into developing the game because Kickstarter really does take sort of all of your bandwidth um, mm -hmm. when you're managing it. So, yeah, getting back into development, we're we're getting our wrapping our heads around now the work that's left. Um, and in, in a sense, it's um, it feels more manageable because we are now at the point where it, it's basically feature complete and it's just a bunch of content that we want to add. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those stretch goals were um, kind of, I would call them minor features. They're not like <laughs> fishing and cooking aren't going to be essential to the game mechanics. They're just going to be fun sort of side story things to do. So that isn't too much of a concern. I know it's like famous last words, but I'm not, <laughs> not worried too much about that taking massive amounts of my time. Because, yeah, for the most part, the main game mechanics, how the charms work, how you find them, how they fit into slots, how the story changes, how the chronicle is used, all those things are sort of figured out now after, like I said, many years of, of getting to this point. So now it's just keeping going with writing the story, Ilsa making more art and creating more music and all the just content pieces that need to fit in. 
Um, speaking of fishing, I personally think that fishing is something that makes any game a lot better. All the good games, um, <laughs> Nier Automata and Stardew, and you know, all of those games aren't fishing games, but they have fishing in them. And mm -hmm. because of that, I was very happy that Beacon Pines will also have fishing in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy too. I, it's one of the things that I used to do as a little kid is go <laughs> wander over to a pond that I probably shouldn't have wandered over to and do some fishing for a while in the summer. Um, what's your favorite character and why? I mean, you are also uh, responsible for some of the character designs, you told me? Yeah, it's definitely a collaborative thing. So some characters okay. we have pretty strong ideas for, and then some characters we have loose ideas for, and also we'll just come back with an awesome-looking character and we'll develop it from there. Um, so, so the main characters I think we mostly had ideas for beforehand and just all three of us talking about them developed the characters that way um but ilsa always does just a great job of creating a really cool look regardless um so is there a character favorite, oh sorry my favorite is is probably beck right now just because she's maybe a little the most like me she's a little bit sarcastic a little bit quiet um i love beck yeah she was amazing I mean, it's cool least... hearing like hearing it's pretty well divided people's favorites like a lot of people love rollo <laughs> a lot of people like luca a lot of people like beck there's not like one standout so is there a character that you didn't like that much and uh, that the other hiding spot team members basically liked a lot uh, or do you have like different teams like team edward and team i forgot what the other guy is called <laughs> and then there's team um, rollo and team beck <laughs> i mean i think for us as the creators of it, it's hard to, you know, they're like our babies. It's hard to, we love them all. Um, but you love there's some also, less. There's also the aspect of, um, like, they're, they've, some of them have been through more of a rigorous process. Like, Bran um, has gone through a couple of different iterations. Um, Ilsa had a, a pretty different look for Bran for a while. And none of us were terribly sold on it so she she had a couple of different iterations and now i love the look of grand she looks just really she's got a perfect sort of like mystery about her but also like that warm old grand feel so i think <laughs> yeah, yeah there's been I'll... times where maybe a character wasn't our favorite but then we iterate on them to make sure it's like it at least feels <laughs> like it fits the part yeah, I mean, uh, I also like Gran a lot. Uh, I mean, you could have potentially taken her into a very stern and strict direction where she is like a non-fun parent or something, but uh -huh. instead she's very lovable and cute and yeah. smells like mothballs or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got a lot of sort of characteristics that people might remember about their Gran because that's like why we put those characteristics in the game because we have these memories of grandparents and you know the sort of cozy warm house with the you know fabric everywhere and the um yeah the the important thing about gran is that we wanted her to be a bit mysterious like i said so she's definitely this caring figure for luca but she's got kind of kind of got her own thing going on so mix that with the fact that this town has some secrets and Gran is suddenly this very interesting character, is making the player wonder how involved is Gran in all this stuff, or is she involved at all? Mm -hmm. Is there? Oh, we answered it already. <laughs> um, if you were in the game, what type of animal would you choose? Uh, would you be, and how would you turn yourself into a game character in this time at all? Uh, what would your role would be in the story? Hmm, interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, no one's actually asked me that. Um, I'm creative sometimes. I, I I was just asked recently if I could be any animal. What would I be? So I guess that's sort of a similar question. I said bird, maybe specifically like an owl or something. Obviously, the idea of flight is pretty appealing to most people. If you ask them if they want to be an animal, I would love to be a bird. So yeah, maybe an owl who's uh, maybe a who <laughs> who's maybe a, more of a nighttime character, <laughs> hangs around in in the night. Um, quiet like i said like myself so yeah i guess um it's hard to think of myself as a major character in the game because uh there are already most of the, the main characters in the kids in the game exist so i would have to be a side character of some sort I guess. 
Maybe some sort of aisle with a bookstore and it's op only open at night. <laughs> yeah, that's it an interesting concept, It also yeah. has a coffee bar that is only open at night. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and you sell your, ch you can buy charms there that are very unique and bring you to secrets or something. I don't know. <laughs> sure, yeah. um, or when will the game approximately come out? Do you have like any ideas? How long? It yeah, will I mean, we take? do. This is also just the best way to get in trouble as a developer is to say when a game's going to be released. But <laughs> as I mentioned, we do we do have a pretty good handle on it now. So, and again, that's a stupid thing to say because things come up and things change. But um, we're shooting for September. But one of the problems is there's a lot of um, potential things we could do to make the game, like translating it into other languages. That would just take a lot of time, but would be really great mm -hmm. to bring more audience in. Um, things like that and bring it to different consoles um, are things that could take a lot of time, but we would also very much like to do. Um, so if it gets delayed, like the problem with September is if it gets de delayed a little bit, it'll probably be delayed until early next year because at least as an indie, you really don't want to release anywhere around the holidays. Yeah, um, yeah. So September is sort of end of september we wouldn't want to go much later than that so if it's getting delayed we'll probably just straight up announce hey we're going to delay it and then rather than delaying it one month and then delaying it again and delaying it then we're just going to you know push it off to when we know we can get it done but we're shooting for september we'll see at, at, a, at the latest i really do think we'll we'll have it out by early next year like february or march maybe sounds great are there any plans for DLC or like sequels maybe? Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we had talked about, like how can we, is there any way we can finish this game and get it out sooner? Um, when we, before we did the Kickstarter, you know, we were running out of funds. So we were like, can we just do an episodic <laughs> thing maybe? Obviously now that we have the Kickstarter funding, we can, we can finish it without necessarily doing it in pieces. Um, so yeah, probably not doing any DLC unless there's like a big demand for it. Um, I'm the kind of person who kind of just likes to, you know, games take so long to make. So you spend yeah. years making a single game and you kind of want to just move on to the next thing or at least take a break and be done with it for a while because um, they just take over your life for several years and it's hard to like convince yourself, okay, I'm going to do more of the same thing that I just spent three years or four years making, right? Um, but I wouldn't want to rule it out. Like there's clearly a a big friendly audience for this now um so i i would i would hate to disappoint people if they really wanted more of of the game after it's done so uh, earlier we talked about the narrator that gets a voice as well now you mm -hmm. already had like a bunch of auditions and everything if we fantasize a little bit here, what celebrity would you cast for the game's narrator? Like some big uh, A-level, S-tier, whatever celebrity. Who could you imagine oh, yeah. we've, could... I mean, we've, a... we've fantasized about that a lot. We've talked about sort of all sorts of different voices that could be interesting. Um, one that came to mind was uh, Nick Offerman, because he's got, um, I guess for those who aren't familiar, he did... Gosh, I never even really watched the show much, but he was on Parks and Recreation. He was sort of the mm. the gruff guy with a mustache who like was very sarcastic and <laughs> soft spoken, but but kind of sarcastic. Um, and we sort of see the narrator as a somewhat sarcastic, but also like Gran, a mysterious sort of character because it is the narrator is the book in the game, so it's this kind of strange character. Um, so really the big thing we are looking for and have thought about like for celebrity voices, just a unique voice, something that's a little different. Um, and we've certainly gotten a lot of that from the audition. So it's exciting to hear some of the really interesting voices we've gotten for the auditions. Uh, which celebrity would be the most unfit for the game? I was, <laughs> uh, when I unfit. wrote... When I wrote that question, I thought, what's the worst case scenario for a celebrity or a narrator that you could get? And I thought, Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's probably the worst one, just because he has would... such a abrasive voice. <laughs> It'd be hard but to listen would... to that for too long. 
yeah. also be the most amazing one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be amazing for like five minutes, and then you would maybe get your ears would start to hurt. <laughs> or maybe the narrator from Hades or uh -huh, Darkest yeah. Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are honestly like they have a, a really good vibe to them that at least fits the sort of mystery tone, right? Mm hmm. So at last, uh, do you have any final thoughts for the readers? Uh, why should they play the game? Why should they wishlist it? Uh, any thanking notes or anything like that that you want to um, tell them? Yeah, I mean, obviously, anyone who's supported a Kickstarter, we're incredibly grateful to. It's like I said, we were about out of funds, and then we had this successful Kickstarter. So it's it's amazing being able to have all this runway now to finish the game and not worry too much about how we're gonna eat. Um, but um. Yeah, in terms of people who might uh, be curious about the game, um, in addition to what we've said so far, I suppose if people are interested in games where not only story heavy, but the characters are almost just as important as the story itself, we've spent a lot of time really just thinking about the characters and their backstories and their motivations, um, probably even more so than the overarching story itself. So there is definitely a large element of mystery and that's important to us for things sort of being interesting and mysterious and wanting to figure figure things out as a player but it's also just a big part of the story and the game is relating to the characters and we've gotten a, some great response from people saying that you know you were asking like favorite characters and stuff a lot of people are are really into the characters which is good mm -hmm. to hear because we spent a lot of time focused on that also the art's amazing ilsa the artist uh, you could find her on instagram if you want to see more of her stuff she's great the uh if i'm not being too much of a a, a bragger by saying the music's good too because i do the music myself um but <laughs> I we've confirm that. At least compliments about that so i can at least point to those instead of saying it myself um and yeah it's um if anyone you know interested in story-based games this is I think I think they'll like it. Nice. So thanks a lot for your time. And yeah, you can get uh, Beacon Pines later on when it's out on HIO, Steam, and the Switch, I think. Yep, yep. Those are the three initial platforms we're planning on. Yep. And I'll link the Steam page to Wishlist later. All right. Cool.